Yeah, Vanessa and Yetta, so we just learned from the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office that four homes were destroyed in this fire. And we're currently posted up at the 75 and the 60 because they're blocking off traffic from the 60 just south of Wickenburg. So you, you can't even get up near the city. Now, to get an update on the situation with this fire, I'm joined with Tiffany with the Forest Service. So give us the basics. How big is this fire? Are there still homes being threatened? So we're still estimating the fire at 150 acres. That has not changed. Um, it's burning along both sides of the US 60, and it's primarily active along the northwest and southwest flanks, so on the west side of the 60. Uh, we're hearing that there's about 100 homes that are threatened by the fire, scattered around the head of the fire, ahead of the fire. Um, but we have ample resources. We used a lot of aircraft early on. Uh, we had single engine air tankers working the fire, a very large air tanker, a lot. We ordered two scoopers. And then we've ordered some additional ground resources Sources to support additional hand crews and engines, uh, and then we had a, doze, a dozer arrive earlier. So yeah, we're not able to get close to the fire right now, but we were able to fly over it uh, earlier this afternoon so we can show you some of that footage. Uh, we were talking earlier some of the challenges that fire crews are facing is there's a lot of dense vegetation over there. A lot of dense vegetation. The fire started within the Hacienda River bottom, so we know that that's composed of salt cedar with tamarisk, which is an invasive species, and then grass and brush. Uh, the fire was fueled by that vegetation and then the wind earlier today. This fire started a few hours ago. Again, it did jump both sides, or it, it is burning along both sides of the highway. It jumped the 60 earlier today. We've had multiple spot fires on the north side of the fire, so it's been a challenge for firefighters, especially the hot and dry conditions. We used seats at the start of the fire. Uh, the retardant usage was ineffective, so that's why we lost the heavy air tankers to help with uh, slowing the spread of the fire until we could get ground crews, hand crews engaged uh, at the ground level. And so now the sun it's pretty much set. What's sort of the game plan heading into those overnight hours? Well, we're hoping, and our fires have been like this over the past couple of weeks, but our conditions are changing. We're hoping that cooler temperatures will help decrease fire activity. Uh, but right now, that's not looking like the case because, again, the northwest and southwest flanks of the fire are still pretty active. Uh, they've been dealing with spot fires. They've been able to catch all of the spot fires, but that's what they've been dealing with throughout the afternoon. And any word on when the 60 will be reopened? Uh, that would be something that ADOT would uh, let us know. We, our operations, will let ADOT know when it's safe to open the highway. Again, this is just out of safety precautions for drivers. Our firefighters are working off the highway. Uh, the fire is burning along both sides of the 60, so we want to make sure that it's safe for not only drivers but for our firefighters. All right, thank you so much for that update, Tiffany. As she mentioned, still about 100 homes being threatened, and you can count on Arizona's family to keep you updated on this developing story. But for now, live near Wickenburg, I'm Stephen Sarabia for Arizona's family. Stephen, thank you.